Wilson, and then I went to school in North Carolina and blah, blah, blah. So my mom bought the house four years ago, and there used to be like a wall here and a little door. I mean, old Colombian houses are really bossy, like in the space too, you know, like little, like rooms. Right. So there used to be a wall here and a little door here, and the windows were smaller. If you notice, like Colombian houses, you know, older houses have to like, have like smaller windows. So the windows are new, I mean, from five years ago. And there used to be a wall here. And kind of like a wall, like a half a wall here. Okay. So this used to be like the living room and the dining room. Okay. Right? And so like this would be like a hallway and a little wall that came to like around here. Okay. Uh, and there used to be a wall here too, but like, not a wall, but like these things used to come you know, like closer here, and it used to be one of those swing doors from like the 70s, you know? Uh, so we opened that, and we opened this up to the ceiling, mm. and now it's just open, and on the sides, you see the sides are open, and the top is covered. Okay. So, like air, and sometimes birds, and things like that, right? Uh, the same thing here. So this used to be, yeah, this used to be open, but it used to be like squares, and we did the, you know, the arches. And here too, we opened it up. So now it's like half cover and half open. It's really gonna rain later mm-hmm. when you're here, and it's like super nice because you know you can get the water and like blah blah. blah you know, <laughs> there is a hammock, but I think that you're too long for this hammock because you want to be kind of like almost horizontal. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're kind of long. I mean, mm-hmm. you're tall for Colombians. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the hammock, I love being here. This is my favorite part. Yeah. So, yeah, the um, the water fountain was in the back because there's like a little open space in the back and we moved it here and that was kind of... This area is actually really good. Is, is it that's the significance because of the sunlight and then the exactly. plants here and then if it rains, they get the... Natural, mm-hmm. Ooh, the natural light, it. and you get air, and so I love plants. Uh, we're gonna be cooking with some of the honestly, of stuff here. I would live here. Oh my gosh, of course, you would live here. <laughs> this is a nice house. Okay, so we're gonna cook with a little bit of this. It's like Colombian oregano. Oh, yeah, can um, I smell it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a leaf, I'm sure. Oh, oh, and just kind of like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I have my rosemary here. And I just harvested some thyme. Okay. See, because you see, it started getting dry. I see the rosemary. Uh huh. Um, and most of the stuff that we're going to eat today is like either from my grandma's house, the fish is from, from like a black collective. Okay. Like uh, artisanal. Uh, fishermen. So they're not, you know what I mean? They go out in the little canoe and if they get 10 fish, they get 10 right. fish. And I can never tell you, I can always tell you that we're going to have some sort of um, seafood. seafood, but I can never tell you it's going to be this or that because I get what they said. Because it's kind of like the American catch of the day okay. kind of situation. Okay. Okay. So you don't have a typo for that? <laughs> I know, and you're gonna be just because we're gonna cook. How are you gonna cook? And you're gonna be like, oh, this is bad. But also, here are paper towels, and here is your. Oh, my apron. apron. You see? And I was gonna give you a pink one just to be funny and like flowery, but I was How like, about I'm good. not gonna do that to the brother. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? So the first thing that we're going to do is drink. Okay, we're going to make some drinks. Hey, mm-hmm. let's get it. Okay, so we have three different traditional black drinks. And these are drinks that you cannot get at the supermarket or the store, like whatever. Okay. So all of them are made with sugar cane. And basically, uh, so this one is called biche. And basically how you get it, I also get it from a collective of women. Mostly, it's mostly black women who make these drinks. And it's just a distilled sugar cane, right? So you're gonna try three of them, but we're gonna do like in little sips. And just smell it first. Okay. Um, let me actually get you some soda water. So yeah, so smell it, try it. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of 
So this is this is what again? Viche. Viche. V i c h e. Viche. Viche. Uh huh. Okay. Now just take a shot like no, that. No, 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 no. We right. don't drink like Americans. <laughs> <laughs> you drink little sips. Little sip by uh-huh. little sip. So like when you go out with Colombians, Colombians will get a bottle uh-huh. and they usually get a shot glass and then like you know people serve you. You know. You take little sips. Okay, little sip, little sip. Salud. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You see, that's why. Like, oh, shoot. I think maybe we're going to have to drink with rum. <laughs> oh, shoot. Whoa. Okay. But you wow, like, I feel yeah, it. Yeah, like, you, and it's kind of like the heat is kind of like right yes, here. And then it. you get the flavor. Because it's heat, but then you get kind of like a little bit kind of like earthy kind of flavor. Yes. Mm-hmm. I feel that. This one is probably going to be more like that, like what you're expecting. You don't have to drink it all. I'm going to drink it all. Oh, okay. For the experience. Okay. Yeah, for the experience. It kind of has like a licorice aftertaste. Exactly. Because they make this with a little bit of licorice. Okay. And this one is going to be the same base to beach it, but it's going to be licorice, cinnamon, blah, blah, blah. And this okay. one is called curao. Curaro. And it's called curao because he has, they have added more things. Right? Like okay. in curao, curar, it comes from the verb curar, which you, which means to cure. When you cure something in like oil or like, you know what I mean? When you just leave it there to like, you know, do its thing. After a while, this actually does, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. After, After you get it, exactly. So you can drink a little bit of water so you can wash your palate. Okay. So smell this one. And tell me if you see any kind of difference between that one and the other one. That one and the first one. This one I can actually identify a scent more than I can with the first exactly. one. Exactly, because this one doesn't really have that much. I don't know alcohols like that either. Just Okay, but you still mean, you know, so try it. What do you think it tastes like? It tastes like a vegetable. I can't quite put my foot on it. Okay, so... So smell... Cloves? Yeah, it has cloves and it has cinnamon. Yeah. So that's cura. Okay? And this one is magic. Okay, is the camera looking at this? Oh, it's, <laughs> it's a 360, so I can oh, catch. Oh, so it does. That's why. Okay, camera. So this one is super special because you see all of the roots in there? Yeah. So this one, so all of them are from sugarcane. So basically, all of these roots are medicinal roots. And what happens is that, you know, the lady in town, you know, in a small black town, you will go to her and you will say something like, I have asthma, right? Okay. And she'll make a preparation especially for you, right? And she would, sometimes you can identify the roots that she puts in there. Okay. But the knowledge is, you know, right. her knowledge, you know what I mean? Like, right. You have to go through a lot of training to do that, you know what I mean? Like, okay. So this one I know just by looking at it, that it has peppermint, it has basil, which is this one right here. All right. It has ruda, which is this one right here. But I don't know what this is. It's like a wood. Some type of root. Yeah, Anita. some type of root. Uh, and I don't know what the other ones are. And this one, this one is really interesting because you know, for guys when they have like in, when they're impotent or something, wow. they put all kinds of in there like a tortuga how do you say you know those animals that walk really slow tortuga turtles Uh turtles turtle i don't know from all kinds of animals so they will put it in the preparation for impotency or like you know whatever you take it up and that's what they that's what they so a lot of aphrodisiac drinks yeah so these ones are you these are for medicine but also but see like in the popular kind of knowledge they consider that aphrodisiac also, obviously, but it's more like in the things to treat the disease. Okay. Right? So it's not like you're just going to take it and then like go into your thing. You know what I mean? Like, no. Like the lady is going to be like, you know, take it like three times a day at okay. this time. But I'm going to give you just a little bit of this one. But okay. this one just like really smell it and try to like, you know what I mean? Hold Whoa. it in the hand. This is very herbal. Exactly because of the oil. Yeah. Uh-huh. Smell like like food seasoning for real, yeah, but in yeah, a drink yeah, form. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Sip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sip. Mm-hmm. 
You know, it's interesting because it tastes like it tastes like like um in Jamaica we have um. Oh, you're from Jamaica. My family's from Jama- family. family's Jamaican, so I'm I'm, I'm familiar. Mm-hmm. It tastes like um, Cersei. You know what Ooh, I mean? Oh yeah. It has a little bit of like it tastes like you know yeah, Cersei's. Of herbs and all yeah. Mm-hmm. And so of course Cersei is used like if you have like any stomach problems, mm-hmm. Cersei is good. So, um, yeah, so this one is basically the only difference is that, you know, it's the same kind of thing where it's like a black medicinal knowledge, ancestral mm-hmm. knowledge, but it has, I imagine, you know, you guys have your own roots and herbs. Right. It's the same idea, but the, I think that the only difference is that you, the woman who made this medicated for specific diseases. Mm. You know what I mean? So there is one for like stomach aches and stomach problems, and there will be one for the womb, and there's one for, you know, the problems that we already discussed. There's one for like headaches. You know what I mean? Like, um, for the heart. You know what I mean? So there's four others. So we can make the drink with biche, and we're gonna make it with lulo juice. Have you had lulo yet? I think so. Okay, so let me give you a shot. The lulo juice? Yeah, I think uh-huh. I had that. But it's lulo. We're gonna. Um, so you can have it with this, which is how I'm gonna give it to you. You can have it with regular rum. Okay. So this juice I made earlier today, and this has so it's uh, lulu juice, mm-hmm. but I made the water with lemongrass, which is right here. You see, like grow herbs mm-hmm. everywhere, but lemongrass is really easy to grow. Actually, I will tell you. Uh, so it's lemongrass, it's peppermint. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm drink away. So drink it and sing. I like it. Mm-hmm. It's a little tart. I love tart things. Yeah, that's why I like it. Okay, so this is a little. I think it's the cousin of kiwi. You're gonna peel it and we're gonna cut it in little pieces to make your drink. So in Colombia, we we move the fruit and not necessarily, not so much the knife. Oh, that's how we peel things. But you can peel it oh, however you want. I might actually peel it kind of. Okay, so you're gonna put some of that in here, like maybe half of the pulp in there. And you're gonna put a little bit of this. Um, Stem too, or just? No, no, just like that. And so, I mean, you know you're wearing your dick, so just mash it. So let's make it with, I think that you would like it with beach. Let's make it with beach. If you don't like it, I'll drink that one. And Okay. Put some ice in there, a little bit of ice. A little bit more. And then a little bit of juice. And so at home, you can make this juice with like kiwi. Push it because that one is kind of like tricky. And just like shake it, shake it, shake it a lot. And it's living. Okay. Okay. Salud. Salud. Can you taste the DJ? Definitely can. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're Jamaican, so you're familiar with plantain. So we're gonna make plantain arañitas. So usually in Colombia we make tostones or patacones, you know, the ones that are kind of like mashed and fried. Mm-hmm. But we're not gonna do that. We're gonna um, do, we're gonna use plantains, but we're gonna use them, we're gonna make them the way a lot of Afro-Dominicans make them, which is like shredded and then like little patties that you fry. I see. Uh-huh. The technique is to help yourself with the knife and just put it under the, the skin. Yeah. And then go with your with your finger and now with your finger it's easier to do it. My mom does it all the time, okay. <laughs> so that's the trick. When you first cut into it, you just cut into the skin and lift it up a little bit. You're gonna shred with the big eyes. This is stuff right there. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, it's uh, black food. Actually, when I first went to the States, I was like, black Americans don't eat plantains? Like, what is wrong with that? But then, you know, I mean, like, I was just there. I mean, like, I was 12, you know what I mean? So then I realized that, no, plantains are tropical and, like, you know, I mean, blah, 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 blah. But the interesting story of plantains is, pla- plantains, the story of plantains is a black story. Because plantains actually come to the Americas with the slave trade. 
So plantains are actually an Asian food. So it's very popular in India. It's believed that the plant originates in India. Mm -hmm. And so it travels to Africa before the Spaniards, before the Europeans, mm. you know, to the trade routes. And then they plant in in West Africa mostly. Mm -hmm. And they, you know what I mean? Just because of things, they, they, there is a new variety of plantain that is made there. Gotcha. And that variety of plantain, which is the one that we just peel, okay. This one is right now. These are platano macho, and this this variety and this variety are now what you consider African varieties. This one is actually called Guineo. And the Guineo, and you know there is a country called Guinea, or you, you know what I mean? So like this is Guineo because it came with the black from Guinea. Ah. So basically, plantains came in the in the slave ships. And what's interesting in Colombia is that, and I think that this is true in all of the countries in Latin America. Is that in Colombia there used to be a thing plantains for slaves and pigs? So it used to be a food, you know, like pig feet and all of those kind of like used to be a food for slaves. But now it's become part of the national. You know what I mean? Like it's like a lot of like peasant foods then become like the Very food, fun. like the national foods. Kind of like gumbo and exactly. stew. Exactly. 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 So plantains. That's the story of plantains. So Asia, Africa, Africa. The Americas. We call them la occidental, la central, la oriental. We're between the occidental and the central mountain ranges. So we're in the valley. This state is actually called Valle del Cauca, mm. Valley of the Cauca River. Valley of the Cauca River. Uh huh. And so we're really close to the Pacific. You can go to the Pacific coast to an aventura in like three hours there. Sí. And a lot of black people there have, these are called um, yerbas de azotea herbs from the garden even though azotea just means like a little outside space okay it doesn't really necessarily mean garden it could be like a mini space and that's an azotea right and so this is oregano and basically what you're going to do is you're going to cut the bigger leaves closer to close to the, the stem and we need like 10 15 of them 10 15 herbs mm -hmm. small and put them dump them in there and meanwhile I'm gonna be putting some thyme also from my garden you see mm -hmm. okay so just mix it in there it should be all well mixed if you're home I will say like three hours you see if you mm -hmm. let it for two more hours, you could eat it. Wow. Yeah, yeah, Just because, slamming it's, uh -huh, because it will get like, you know, it will get to the color of like how you cook, you know, when it's cooked. So this, when it starts turning this color, it means that it started to cook. Cook, technically. Okay. I mean, like three hours and just slime juice and salt. And I'm just going to take some of the water out. And this one is going to be just really simple seasoning. This is another, we're going to make this with another. Okay. Kind of, well, this is how we're gonna season the shrimp. Okay. Smell this and tell me what do you think he has? Uh, cumin. Uh huh. Uh, coriander. Uh huh. I'm missing the other one. Cinnamon. Hold on. Cinnamon. Yeah. in it? Like the thing that gives us kind of like a sweet flavor. Is, is it garlic in there as well no. or no? The sweetness is the cinnamon. Okay. Uh huh. He has. There's something else I'm missing. What you got you pimento seeds in there or no? No. Why does it smell all spice? It's like... It has a yeah. little bit of chipotle peppers. It smells kind of like it, but something smells sweet about it. But, mm -hmm. okay. So this is just the, our basic mix for this. And it's Afro-Colombian in the sense that we use a lot of cumin and cinnamon to season everything. But this is another one of those fusions, right? Like, mm. uh, Cumin and cinnamon are like basic. <laughs> we use it right. for everything. For todos. And the trick is that we're gonna add actually just the dust sticking out of sugar. Brown just the sugar, okay. Dust. But it's just like a dash. This like helps them brown a little bit, you know. So you oil your hands because that helps 
the plantain stick together. Okay. So you take like a little bit, enough for you to make like a little ball. All right. And you kind of like do it like that so that it sticks because that's the starch. You see that white thing? I see it. Uh-huh. You see it right there? I see it. Mm-hmm. So... And then you put it right here. This one's actually, I need a little bit more oil. And then you put it at the top of your fingers like that. It's easier to just do it right there. And they're never gonna just stick all together, but you just, you know, make a little ball and put it right there. Ooh, be careful. It has a little bit of water and so. Gotcha. Okay, so since you're, what I would say is like, you see this one? Is to just put it like that and let it fall. How long have you been doing cooking classes? Since this year, because of, uh, of the pandemic. That's the situation, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, because the cooking goes with the events. We always have like some sort of fusion food okay. for the events. All right. And when the, when we couldn't have events, people were like, I want food, right? So we started sending people deliveries or having like small, small, small things here. Like you and your girlfriend or boyfriend or something like that. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. My turn, okay. Ready. So pop your hands over here. Rub. Mm-hmm. Yep, and then take like one little ball. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And then move it towards the top of your fingers, so like right here. And then take it with one kind of and put it, just like put it like be careful with your fingers. Yeah. That's good. You see like the sides, for example, of this one in the middle? Okay. How it's like already kind of like darker? Mm -hmm. That's probably, that, probably, that one is probably ready to turn. So you, you see, you go underneath and if it's really easy to lift it, then you turn it. Because at the beginning, they will stick to the pan when you first put them in there because they're wet. But as they cook, they're easy to move. If you cannot move it easily, then don't force it because eventually no, it will come. Uh -huh. So this one too, and you know because of the color in there around. You see, it's kind of like this color. Mm -hmm. This one is ready, but that one, the one to the side is probably not ready yet. You see the difference? Yes. It's, it's not as dark. Like, uh -huh. no. This one is not ready either. Okay, so we're just going to lift up. Clean it up just a little bit. Just take one and start putting it like, around like that. But don't forget, if you guys like this content, don't forget to subscribe. You always got to subscribe, give a like, you know what I'm saying? This is Nate in your state. We here cooking. You already know I love food, so. <laughs> well, the shrimp is actually giving off like a sweet scent. Mm -hmm. And um. Like sweet cinnamon. Yeah, man, it just smells heavenly. These are the arañitas are almost ready. <laughs> yeah, like yogurt, no, no flavor, right? Okay, right. Mm -hmm. A little bit of wine. That shrimp smell real good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yo, that's a powerful smell. I know. Holy smokes. It's really good. And you can just make your own mix, right? Like, right. Uh, the thing that you didn't get was ginger. Ginger is in it. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. I could not tell at all. I mean, it's not necessary, but we put it. You know what I mean? So, I do you remember the mix? What is the mix? So, we have cumin, mm -hmm. coriander. Uh, cinnamon, mm -hmm. ginger, ginger, and a little bit of chipotle. And chipotle, but you can do either paprika pa okay. or cayenne. You just need something that adds a little bit of heat. Got mm -hmm. you. But not heat, heat, more like heat flavor. 
Mexican. And chipotle oh, are like smoky and like that. Paprika is also kind of smoky. Gotcha. So you want something that is like a pepper, mm -hmm. but not so much, yeah, paprika. Mm -hmm. Or cayenne. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we have the yogurt sauce, a little bit of lime. A little bit of sugar because of the toughness of the lime. But just a little bit. It's not like Americans use a lot of sugar. Okay. okay, so you can mix that. And then with your fingers, you taste try it. taste it and you can adjust. But those are the ingredients. So wait, look, we put, a, so we make yogurt. a yogurt sauce. So we put yogurt, uh -huh. brown sugar, a little bit of, this is regular uh, granulated, this is salt? Yeah, this is salt, but this is uh, sea salt. So that's sea salt. So we got sea salt in the mix. Uh -huh. And there's another, oh, cilantro. we squeeze lemon. Cilantro and then a squeezed lemon. Uh -huh. There we go. All right. Lime. Squeeze lime. It tastes like a mixture. Okay, so you like it? You like? I like it. It's this fine. How it is? It's fine. Okay, perfect. It's in the middle. You know what uh -huh. I'm saying? It got the. It's got the sweetness and it got the uh, savory side with the because of the salt. From the tradition right here, you know what I'm saying? That's, <laughs> a, that's how you gotta do it. All right. <laughs> From the okay. I uh, here we go. Do, do I eat it with the yogurt sauce or do I try it? Try it alone first. I see. What does it taste like? The plantain chip. It tastes like. Uh -huh. What we usually would we'll do is take one of the things, to take one like this, so you can put the shrimp on top, and then a little bit of salt. But maybe you want to try the shrimp first without anything. Of course, mm -hmm. we always gotta try the shrimp first, so. Okay, this I have to get. Yeah. The blend of the flavors is like. It's light, it's calm, mm -hmm. but you, it has a little boldness. The funny thing is, I don't notice the cinnamon light much. Mm -hmm. It's hidden, yeah, because but, it's a little bit. Mm -hmm. but it does complement the rest of the flavor. Exactly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then now we have it like kind of like a toast sandwich, mm -hmm. so we'll throw on top. And then, mm -hmm. all right, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Why does it make sense? <laughs> <laughs> it does make sense, right? Once you put it all together. The <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and you know you can eat it how you got. You know what I mean? Because people sometimes keep the shrimp on the thing, you know what I mean? I don't know if we have enough yogurt sauce for this. You You're gonna have to fish with the head and everything. Coconut water. Okay. I'm drinking it, right? Yeah, you're drinking it. Yeah, right. So you can taste it. How it's natural, not processed or anything. It's okay. lighter than the processed one because the processed one they put like things to make it thick. You know, the one that one that you buy in a can is thicker. I noticed um, some coconut that you drink from from the nut itself, it's like sweeter. Yeah, the coconut. Is there a question why that one wasn't as sweet as the uh, other one? Ooh, because this is whatever coconut you get. The ones that you get in the in the market, they put they put sugar and all of that to make it all the same taste. Okay. But imagine everything in nature is different. So one day right. you get a plantain, it's a little bigger, a little smaller, you know what I mean? Sweeter, sweeter right. Like, yeah, that's exactly. true. You know, that's very true. Exactly. Because there would be times like that when I do eat an orange, I'm like, why does this orange taste so much better than this one? What we're going to make is 
coconut rice. Yes. And we're gonna make the coconut rice with. Hey, let's get it. I'm ready. And this one is called Lisa. So it has scales, but when you touch it, it's really Lisa. It's like really smooth. Even with the okay. scales, this one obviously doesn't have a scales. Uh, it's clean yesterday when we got here. And like I said, these ones are from like this. And we're gonna have that with ogao. And ogao is basically a tomato sauce. And that one is also kind of like a sort of heritage from from West Africa. If you go to West Africa, they will have something like yellow rice and stuff like that. And yellow rice is basically rice mixed with this kind of like tomato sauce kind of thing. And it's kind of sweet and tangy and stuff like that. Right. We're going to make that and we're going to cook our fish in there. Okay. And the variation that we're going to make, like I said, you know, everything about fusion is that we're going to put a little bit of coconut milk. Yes. In it, right? So that turns into pescado and cocao. In cocao means in coconut. Cocao. In cocao. Okay. Uh -huh. Is that we're going to cook the milk a little bit. You see, because it's fresh, you see the stones? Mm -hmm. This will be like the coconut butter. Right. And when we cook it even more, so we're going to cook it to like, this is going to reduce and reduce and reduce. Right. We're going to get uh, coconut oil, actually. Because coconut oil is basically that. You reduce the coconut. And then the coconut is um, oil. So we're going to, so the rice is simple. But it takes a while to cook. So the okay. first thing, if you're gonna do this in the States, I would just say get a can of coconut milk, you know what I mean? Okay, and, just, do it. and just kinda like cook it in there. <laughs> like, like but we're gonna try to make it, you know, the real way. So we're gonna yeah. put this uh to boil a little bit and we can just leave it there. So we're gonna shred the tomatoes. So you're gonna shred one and I'm gonna shred the other. So oh, I can smell, here. I can smell it. So you see the difference now between the milk? It begin, it's beginning to separate. You yes. see that? I... And on top, you see how it's becoming yellow? Mm. That's going to turn into oil. Ah, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, you see? It's yeah. like separating. Gotcha. What I can say about the coconut um, milk that's being um, distilled, or being boiled out right now, mm -hmm. is that it smells very buttery. Yeah. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. It smells like I want to eat it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Put the onions in here. Is that called the onions? Yeah. Those are like scallions. Okay, Yeah, it's some air. That's not really how it's skin. Mm -hmm. But it's really, you see how like already my hands are getting right. Yeah. So, so the okay, no one on the pot, right? Mm -hmm. And here you have to pay attention to it because it will burn. Mm -hmm. So you have to Look at the oil. I see it. You see it right there? I see it. I see the oil. If you're a girl in Latin America, you're always in the kitchen with your grandmother, with your mom. Okay. So, you know, more oil. Look at all of that. A lot of oil. Oh, you so, got... we put just a little bit of sugar. Mm -hmm. So, it's mandatory that you have to reduce it to an oil in order for you to... Well, it's not. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, okay, okay. I got you. So in this case we don't wash the rice. 
Because, okay. uh -huh, because we want to kind of like toast it here. Mm. And if you have some water, it won't toast. You know, it starts to cook. Got you. Uh -huh. Very different than Jamaicans, and I tell you, this is totally mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and give it for one second because you want it to cook and then so spread it, make sure that the, the body spread it properly. Mm -hmm. no, so good. Yeah, leave it like that, don't do it too much, and then like a minute and turn it around again, let it like that and cook it. You see, because the grains have to cook. So you want the majority to be kind of that white. I mean, not the majority, I mean, you don't see. Okay. And I want you to try it when it's halfway done without salt first. So it's still a little bit tart, but it's getting sweeter. So, yes. so this doesn't have any salt or anything, it's full of flavor. Right? We're just gonna I never salt before, I always salt at the very end because I use, I use very little salt. I mean, you saw that for the other dish, I barely put in the salt. It was fantastic. Because as long as you have flavor, you don't need salt. Because right. the salt either enhances when you use just a little bit, enhances the flavor, or it overpowers even if it's not salty. Right. You see what I'm saying? Some dishes are not salty, but the salt you can still feel. Yes. That's not supposed to happen. What you're supposed to happen is that you feel and you taste the flavor. Right. Uh-huh. This is the rest of the this is the rest of the meal that I made today. Okay. Mix it. The rest of the coconut milk in there. And now we do See, very simple dishes, but they take a while. Because this has to reduce again. Okay. So we're gonna cook it full. Basically, And it goes inside of the mixture uh -huh. over there? Mm -hmm. Okay. But since fish cooks really quickly, this is gonna have to be almost done mm -hmm. for the fish to go in there. We're gonna put a little bit. I can't identify lemongrass. <laughs> <laughs> so this gives it like a Thai channel. Gotcha. Even though we also put lemongrass in food. Uh, we put lemongrass or dal, uh, oregano that we put in the pancake. But since we already used oregano, let's put lemongrass in there. And it's gonna be really thin, but it's just gonna be the kind of like the mini aroma. And at the end, we're gonna put some lime in there. When it's dry, you can see we're gonna cover it with a plantain leaf. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that also gives it a little bit of flavor. Right. So you can just kind of like take one and cook, and take the other one and cook. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Who needs soda when you can have this? And if I do that, with this, it will be like uh, bubbly with the juice. Right. And like, it gives it just a little bit of flavor. Good, right? You can do that at home too. Just get like kiwi or, or oranges. Because oranges are like whatever. Just squeeze the orange. And have it in your fridge and soda water and mix it into soda. You know what I'm saying? Who needs who needs the sugary sodas when you exactly. can have something like this? Help. And it's kinda like refreshing and What she just did was just add like a dash of salt. Um, she says that whenever we got to the ending, we just, she adds the salt at the very end. And uh, we, we, we want to test it out right now. 
Perfect. That's it. Because I thought it was fine, right? I thought it was fine. So the thing is, as she said earlier, you don't want to add too much that it overpowers the flavor that's already there. That's natural, right? But you want to enhance it. Exactly. A little bit of salt enhances it. Too much overshadows. So what are we going to make right now with the avocado? Just a salad. An avocado? Like this is just avocado, lime, and cilantro. Gotcha. Oh, that's nice. So remember how you tasted at the beginning, the first taste that I gave you? Yeah, it was it was kind of fresh without uh -huh, and tangy. fresh tangy. Yes, 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 yes. And not as sweet. Mm -hmm. Correct. And we didn't put sugar in here, right? Mm -hmm. It's just the sweetness of the tomatoes. Right. It tasted um juicy too. Mm -hmm. Right. Just like that. You see the eye, how you can still kind of see blood in the eye? Okay. That means that it's really fresh in the United States. So even when you get the fish head, you probably won't have any kind of like ink or anything. Mm. Uh huh. So yesterday it had like it was bloodshot because it was like it was taken out of the water. Right. So now it still has a little bit of pink and now it's really slow. So we put the cover over it. So it kind of steams and it simmers in the, in the thing. Okay. And we're almost done. Yeah, food is done. And just let it sit. You don't mix it at all, or just let it sit like No, yeah, let it sit right there so you cook some one side and then you just fold it to the wow, other side okay. because you don't want to move it too much. Right. Because it begins to steam if it has a lid on it. Okay. Okay, yo, I, I like this style of cooking, yo. I'm just, I'm just saying. This is really dope. <laughs> this is super dope. So the idea of the house is to have a house that is strongly Afrocentric but that is also contemporary art. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's not like, you know, so like for example, in the United States, maybe it's my own ignorance, but whenever I go to like a place that is say it's like African or something like that, you know, there will be like the masks and like, you know, this and that, and it's kind of like, it tends to be more traditional. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But here in the house, if you see, like there is like touches of all kinds of things, like contemporary, but, so like this is like my grandmother's, you know, like, sewing machine from like 1920 wow. right and so but but the art over there is really contemporary this yeah so this is by a black woman artist from brazil um and this is actually the poster for her for her exhibit and this is uh this is the artist, and this is a black print maker in Brazil. Um, so this is a print, that's a photo, uh, photographs, a photograph, right? Um, and on the other side, it's like more traditional fabrics, but if you see, the fabrics are like put in a kind of like more contemporary way, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like this is not a curtain, but it is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's not, but it is, you know what I mean? So like the gotcha. idea is to have kind of a mixture of contemporary and what you would call traditional African art. But for example, here, these are like, uh, as, you, as you see on these screens, I love plantains, and these are like, you know, I just hand planting leaves and then they just, I let them dry. Okay. In the same, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's that idea of kind of like bringing nature and our African traditions into the house because if you were like in a in Colombia we still have like mud houses and so like a mud house would be like mud but then like on the ceiling you have like leaves that are you know the ceiling is made of leaves either palm okay. or plantain kind of like interspersed you know what I mean gotcha so like the idea obviously this is a modern house so like the idea is to bring like a sense you know, like a sense of, of culture, 
Not, but not just culture, African culture. African culture. Uh -huh. Afro di diasporic culture, because obviously we're not in Africa. Right. Right? We're in the Americas. Mm -hmm. And so, so yeah, so we do have masks, right? Mm -hmm. But the masks are like combined with all kinds of contemporary things. Gotcha. You know? So, for example, this table was made by an artisan, by a black artisan, and try to lift this table. Got some weight to it. Exactly, and this this wood is uh, a wood that yeah, it's like in a black region. So if you go to a Choco, which is like north of here in the Pacific Coast, you yeah, heard about Choco. Uh huh. It's black. Yeah, black. Yeah. Uh, this is called Amarillo, and you will see like a lot of houses made out of this wood. Amarillo. But yeah, make sure that you tell your audience that this is like, I mean, this is a heavy table, right? <laughs> yes, it's got some weight to it, but I'm not, because we got the plan over there, I'm not trying to, exactly. <laughs> I'm but, not trying to flex. <laughs> exactly. So is it, so like, so yeah, so the house is not made of wood, but we try to make some things that are like wood, traditional wood okay. that we use, you know what I mean? But these chairs, for example, were the chairs that my parents bought like 50 years ago mm -hmm. so it has like that weird like european style you know what i mean like all just kind of like whatever but then we we upholster the chairs with african fabric feel you right. and this is actually like a dry how do you call it um cocoa this is like where oh, you get oh really yeah this is where oh, you get chocolate this is dry chocolate so this is like so like this when it's you know when it's green this is how it looks in the tree, and you cut it, and it's the pulp that becomes the, you know what I mean, chocolate. So this is a dry one, um, because they look beautiful, you know, seeing how they are. And this is also a dry fruit that you don't have in the States. I wish that this wasn't dry, so I can give you two. That's a fruit. Yeah, when you open this and it's green, what? because this is dry now, when you open it, it has like this white little kind of, sorry, balls. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of like you know, mm. the seeds in there. It's like yeah, it has some seed and it, and it's covered with white. Mm. So you eat the white meat. Mm -hmm. I got you. I got yeah. you. Yeah. So that's the idea, right? Of the house is a contemporary. Uh, but what is it called, though? I mean, we don't have it in the states, but what what would be like? It's called guava. Guava. Uh huh. <laughs> I mean, mom, I still like rice and peas if you're watching this. Oh. <laughs> I still like rice and peas. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> mom, mom, he still loves your mom. <laughs> I still love your mom, so I'm just, just letting you know. Your rice is the best, mom. <laughs> right, so I'm not trying to get in trouble right now. <laughs> exactly. He talked about your rice. He said that it was great. <laughs> Uh, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, thanks, thanks, thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> oh, sweat. Do y'all see this? Oh, my gosh. Sobreviviendo al golpe. Ah. Ella está con su carita de pasaporte. Sobreviviendo a la. Bon apostille. I 
like how it's not sweet, but it's just right and savory. It definitely captures the essence. It captures the essence of the coconut in this rice right here. Avocado salad, sprinkled with some herbs. Dash of salt, I believe. Mm -hmm. I do taste um, a bit of lime in it as yep. well to bring out that zesty flavor. Mm -hmm. That nice zestiness. Y'all feel what I'm saying? It's a refreshing, it's a refreshing salad. I'm ready for this fish. Okay, I tried good, everything. Good, good, I tried good. everything once. Let's do the fish. Let's do the All right. fish. Once again, this has been simmering kind of good. Wow. Okay. That's not even the fish yet. That's the sauce. The tomato sauce mixed with the coconut on top of it. It gives it like a buttery taste. Because it's been like reduced a bit into like a little bit of an oil. Here comes a piece of the fish. You already know. It's like a, a buttery essence of everything together. This just makes me happy. Tell me, tell me. <laughs> this makes me so happy, though. It, it's and I see what you mean. It's it's not it's not overcooked, and, it, and you cooked it like at, it's like at the right at the right pace. The rice, like you put the like the um the sauce on top um to let everything cook even, right? Mm -hmm. With the herbs still in it too. This is fresh. Yeah. You see how the fish tastes like fish? This is fish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so be careful with there's gonna be a few Bone. this fish is not that it's not I mean it's river fish, but it acts like a sea fish. So it doesn't have that many bones. Okay. So it has just like the spine okay. and the bones. So it doesn't have that many little bones, but be still be careful. Okay. Especially mm -hmm. Americans, you know, Americans have we, we eat we kinda put everything and eat like in one chunk. Yeah, but also the fish that you get in America doesn't have that much, you know what I mean, like the, that many bones because it's mostly sea fish. And sea fish has like big bones, you know what I mean? I know. The type of fish my mom be getting got a lot oh, of bones. Oh yeah, but you see, because, you know what I mean, because she's, from the, she's from the old country. <laughs> mama cooking, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, but you know like in America you eat like sea bass and all that kind of stuff, that kind of fish doesn't have that much. Oh, you want to know what it is? Mm -hmm. I don't eat sea bass. Oh, but you see? You know what, you know what fish? In my, um... Pretty much in my family, the only fish that we touch mm -hmm. is red snapper. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So if it's not salmon, it's red snapper. Those mm -hmm. are the only two fishes that we really mess with. But since salmon doesn't have any any bones, when you get right. us a steak, that's not that. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But this one's yeah. You know what I also noticed because you said it came straight from the river. Mm -hmm. This fish has kind of like a tougher texture. Like when you chew into it, it's not like. I don't know, American food. I like America. I don't want to keep my snap, nap, snapping on you. But it doesn't feel like... Because I had this type of style before. Like when I went to um, Casa de Agua. Uh -huh. And they said... It oh, yes. And they said it catch the fish daily. Mm -hmm. It had the same texture. Like they just caught the fish. And then it's like... It's, it's a little... Uh, how do I say it? It's, describe the flesh. The flesh is like it's it's you have to tear the flesh. That's what I have to say. It's not like um, like American fish where it's soft and like overcooked. You just you just eat it. You know what I'm saying? You can like pull like pull off the bone. This, you know what I'm saying? You you have to eat it like as if it's like chicken flesh. You get what I'm saying? Exactly. Mm. It tears it tears like chicken flesh, and that's how you know it's fresh. The price is dessert. Oh, we got dessert. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Surprise dessert. Okay, but you have a choice. Man. Icicle, like a Colombian cranberry icicle. Okay. Or chocolate muffins, but made with real cocoa, Colombian chocolate. Uh, or you can have both. <laughs> I, I, I actually really okay. want you to try the popsicle. I, I want both. <laughs> <laughs> I want both. 
think I think we agree for both. <laughs> okay, first of all, okay, these are these actually are my grandmothers from like 60 years ago. Okay. Uh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> that was great. Ooh, this is sweet. Oh, I love it. You have a blender at home? Yeah. Put like frozen cranberries, yogurt with no flavor. Mm -hmm. A little bit of milk because the yogurt is gonna make it too thick. A little bit of milk and just a touch of sugar. Sugar you use like salt to enhance flavor, not to sweeten. So these ones have a little bit of sugar, but they still have the tartness of the cranberry, right? Like the sugar, it's not sweet. It's really good. Mm -hmm. And blend them and put it in it like, you can put it like, you know, if you get like a ice cube tray, mm -hmm. if you don't have the, you know what I mean? Like just, so question, do people normally mix this with their drinks too or no? Because I know in some states, some people put it with juice. Uh-huh, but in Colombia we don't really do that. Okay. No, we don't really do that in Colombia. Okay, pure cocoa. You already know that Nate also came looking for chocolate too. Colombia is known for their chocolate as yeah. well, y'all. So mm -hmm. you gotta have Colombian chocolate. And here is the real thing in the form of muffins. But you definitely taste the rawness of the chocolate, the cocoa. Yeah, and it's right. strong. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, once again, y'all, thank y'all for watching this video. Thank you for joining me in this adventure. Let me know what you thought about in the comment section. What you thought about all this history, this Afro-Colombian history that you just heard in the cooking. Would you come here and do a class with say your name, please, because I know I'm going to butcher it. I don't want to say it with yeah, my English. Three. Three, ah, three. I'm not gonna say it in my English accent because I'm not gonna mess it up. <laughs> Will you come do a class with her? And just let me know. Like her information is gonna be down on um, her B Airbnb information is gonna be down in the description. Make sure you check it out. And um, yo, thank you so much for watching this come video. Come with me. <laughs> Definitely come. Fun? Yo, this is fun. I learned a lot. Yeah, but I'm not just a teacher. You can just hang out. We can drink. Freaking cook. For real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But thank you so much for watching this video. Keep eating. Keep exploring. And I'll see you next time. Peace.